This is now part three of the Geometry First Semester Final Review. We left off on number 33, so let's just get started on number 34. In 34, you determine if triangle WZX is congruent to triangle uh, YZX, by which congruency. Now, if we look at the diagram that we have, we have XW and XY, those outside sides are the same. We have reflexive, which is XZ, which is a side in both of them, is the same. And then we have those right angles, one there, one right next to it. So then if we look at how they are uh, congruent. Now we know it's not side 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 because we have at least one angle. We want to be careful not to call it side angle side either because the angle is not between the two sides. In the picture that we have if the angles were at x they would be side angle side. So that's out. Now that doesn't mean not, it's not necessarily congruent what we're actually going to go with is hypotenuse leg. Because of the right angles, they are right triangles, and uh, we have a hypotenuse, XW, and XY, and the legs would be XZ in both of them. In number 35, we look at them in identifying the two triangles, and this one is not necessarily congruent. And you may be thinking, why isn't it angle, angle, angle? Angle, angle, angle does not apply to congruence. The only time we ever see angle, angle is for similarity, and that is when the two shapes are similar in size, but um, same shape, different size. And that, that one side being involved whenever we look at congruence is important because that makes sure that it's going to be the same size. If I change this to be how they're similar, well, I could have said answer C, but nope, since it's congruent, answer is D, none. For number 36, we have that AD and BC intersect, okay? AX, XB are the same. CX, XD are the same. So how are they congruent? We get two pairs of, or a pair of vertical angles at x. So if we're looking at it, we could say it's side angle side. Now we need to match them up to uh, figure out how they're congruent. But before we do that, do you notice how ACX is the first part of each answer? So it's not so much name how the triangles are congruent or name which triangles are congruent. It's name which one is congruent to ACX. And if I look, ACX follows that order. So we'd start at B, go to D finish at x, so it'd be b, d, x, which is answer c. And number 37, which of the following could not be lengths of the sides of a triangle? This is when we're given three sides, we have to make sure the longest side is less than the sum of other two. So if I look at my list here, 89 on b is the longest side. 89 is less than 5 plus 89. So we know that makes a triangle. So that one's okay. Number 8, or number A. I have 19 is less than 8 plus 15. 19 is less than 23. So that one's okay. Let's give me the others here. If I look at an answer D, 4 is less than 2 plus 3. 4 is less than 5. So that one's good. It's when we get to answer C where we have a problem. 9 is not less than 4 plus 5 because that's saying 9 is less than 9. Now this doesn't work because if I try to represent this and draw a picture, if I had 9 units was the longest side, the other two sides wouldn't reach to make a triangle. But you may be thinking, well, 5 and 4 is 9 and it needs to be 9. Actually, if that was the case, it wouldn't just make a straight line. It needs to be a little bit more. That's why we have that greater than, not equal to, but greater than to make it a triangle. So we go with C is not a triangle. For 38, we have three cities. City A and B is 11 apart. B and C are 16. We need to find the possible difference. This is just like number 37 on the last screen. But instead of saying the longest side and making a ratio, what we're going to do here is take the difference of those two sides and the sum of those two sides, and the value is going to be somewhere between them. So the difference, 16 minus 11, is 5, and the sum is 27. So our third side has to be somewhere between there. And the only one that works would be 6, because if I chose 6 and I said the longest side if I chose 6, I'm going to get ahead of myself here, the longest side would be 11, the longest side would be 16, is less than 6 plus 11, that would check out. So 6 works. Number 39, we have X and Y are 8 apart, 
y and z are 12 apart. Possible difference, well, distance. Difference is 4, sum is 20. Something between 4 and 20 would be 19. And if I tested that, I would have 8, 12, and 19, which 19 is less than 8 plus 12. So that would work. Number 40, the lengths of the two sides are 15 and 20. What is the possible third side? Or what third side would they be between? Well, this one's kind of setting up for us. The difference would be 5. The sum would be 35. So it would be between 5 and 35. In number 41, we have the angles are the same there with the 32 degrees. That means it's a bisector, this side right here, this ray. And that means it's equidistant to the sides. So I'm just going to say 6x plus 2 equals 4x plus 8. I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. 2x plus 2 equals 8. 2x equals 6. So x equals 3. If I want to check to make sure, plug that back in. 4 times 3 is 12 plus 8 is 20, 6 times 3 is 18, plus 2 is 20. Our answer is 3. For number 42, we have a mid-segment. It's a very common error to put AB and MN equal. But if we look at that picture that we have, they're definitely not the same length. So we're not going to set them equal. Now, if a mid-segment comes up, we think it's in the middle of the triangle, of those segments. That's how we get a mid-segment. It's how we connect the midpoints. That's going to be half. So to make it match up, I'm going to take 2 times x plus 8 equals 5x plus 4. Now, I could have taken half of the 5x plus 4, but it's a little bit easier just to multiply the smaller piece by 2. I get 2x plus 16 equals 5x plus 4. Subtract 2x from both sides, and I get 3x plus 4 and 16, subtract the 4, I get 12, 3x equals 12, we get x equals 4, double check, make sure they want x and not to plug it back in, we do just need x here, so we're going to go with answer B. For number 43, we need to find the measure of angle C, now think of this as two triangles that are overlapping, so if I focus on each triangle one at a time, I can find pieces I need, so if I look at the top one, I have 45, 45, and 80, or 45 and 80. Add those together, I get 125, and I subtract that from 180, and I get 55. That's the angle right here. Now, then I look at the other triangle. I'll draw that one in blue here. I have 50 and 100, gives me 150. If I subtract that from 180, I get 30 left over, which goes here. So I have this new triangle with 30, 55, and C, is now I can find that angle C because it's the new triangle formed by their overlap. So 55 plus 30 is 85. Subtract that from 180, and I get 95 degrees for angle C. And that is our answer for, our answer we choose is D. In number 44, it's uh, taking the idea of having side lengths and being able to figure out which uh, angles rank in order from largest to smallest, or maybe equivalent. And our rule is the larger the side, the larger the opposite angle, the smaller the side, the smaller the opposite angle. So in order to find the smallest angle, it's going to be opposite the smallest side. The smallest side is 50. So it's the angle at x, but when I look over my answers, notice they all use the three letters. Well, we just want to identify the one that has x in the middle letter, because that's where we always put the vertex, and c would be our choice, because that is z, x, y, and that's the angle right there. For number 45, we need to figure out which segment is the longest. And what we're going to do here is kind of work our way through and look at the options that we have in the triangles. So looking at just the first triangle, ABE, the longest side is opposite the largest angle, which is 64. So that is our candidate in the first triangle. In the second triangle, I have 66, 60, and 54. 
66 is the largest, so that means that the CE is going to be the largest in that triangle. Now, by what we have so far in those first two triangles, I went from BE to now CE. But the fact that BE and CE are both in the same triangle, that gives us the help here that BE is not going to be the largest overall because CE will always be bigger than that. So now we got CE. We go look at our last triangle, and 61 degrees is the biggest, so that brings us to CD. Now between CD and CE, CD is going to be the biggest. So our answer is CD. And now a last thought with this. Just because it's the biggest angle in the whole diagram doesn't mean it's the biggest side opposite that. You have to pay attention to narrowing down your options and eliminating them. That 66 is opposite CE. Yes, I realize 66 is the biggest angle, but if you had a very small obtuse triangle like this next to a very large acute triangle like this, just because that angle is the biggest doesn't mean this side is the biggest. Obviously those two sides there are far bigger. So that's why you gotta work your way through and narrow down your options. Last one in this set will be number 46. We need to prove an indirect proof. Whenever we try to find the first step for an indirect proof, we're gonna assume the opposite of where we wanna go. We're gonna keep our givens the same, but we assume the opposite of where we wanna go. Where we wanna go is that the measure of angle B is 40 degrees. So if we assume the opposite of it equal to 40 degrees, we assume it's not 40 degrees. Now from then we could go on, you would solve in the proof um, indirectly, you'll eventually find a contradiction where that shows that B has to be 40 degrees. But all we really need to know here is that, uh, or that first step we have to assume. So we'll finish that up for part three. I'll put a link in to get to part four and we'll finish up the rest of this set.